This is a video that I have wanted to make for a really long time. Let's do it. What's up beautiful humans and here on my table is a bunch of stuff that I use for vlogging. Now vlogging is becoming more and more popular and filming yourself and filming your travels and filming basically your passions and your loves and posting them for the internet to see is a huge thing. And I'm one of those people. I love traveling. I love Disney. I love food. I love all of it. And I love also creating videos. So I um, wanted to make a video that's hopefully helpful to you um, and maybe answer some questions that you may have if you are interested in starting a channel or if you are new to the space or if you're looking to upgrade some things and, and whatever. But I wanted to film basically everything that I use um, for vlogs. Everything that I have used for filmmaking over the past couple years. And um, that can be anything from something that is super unnecessary um, and things that are absolutely necessary. But the main thing here is that if you want to vlog and you have a phone, that's all you need. Um, if you want to get started and you're like, I don't have the equipment, I don't have a camera, I don't have this stuff. If you have this, you have the power to vlog. You have the power to make a film. You have the power to make a movie. Billie Eilish made an entire documentary on an iPhone. Selena Gomez has made music videos on an iPhone. Many people have done this and many big vloggers think this is a great source of doing that. iPhones have amazing cameras now, especially the 12 um, Pro with the Dolby um, Vision. It is beyond anything that any phone has ever had the capability of doing. So if you have an iPhone, probably anything newer than a six, you're set to go. Um, you might need to add a microphone on it or something like that to capture audio if you're doing something live. Um, if you're vlogging yourself like this, you might need to add some external audio because the iPhone audio isn't as great as it should be. Um, the picture is solid, um, it films in 4K, it films 60 frames a second in 4K, which is a huge deal, but if you don't know what that means, then that's totally fine. Um, but this is the power to do anything. So if you have a phone, you have everything you need to start a channel. But if you wanted to upgrade a little bit, you have so many, so many, so many different options. The first one that I recommend that I use most is my Sony ZV-1. I'm actually filming on that right now. I'm a Sony fangirl through and through. Um, I actually adore the Sony ZV-1. I think it is an amazing starter camera, even though I'm not a beginner. Um, it is an amazing uh, point and shoot situation. So if you have never picked up a camera before, um, a Sony ZV-1 is an amazing, amazing tool for you to have. Um, it is simple. The color science that Sony has is beyond anything that any camera manufacturer has ever made. It is stunning. It's easy um, and it's true to life. And the specs that the Sony ZV-1 has is beyond anything that I could ever ask for for a point and shoot camera. The only flaw is that the angle when you stabilize your footage is not wide enough, in my opinion. Um, you don't have to agree with that, that's totally fine. But the video I did previous um, on Tuesday was about the second thing that I recommend, this little um, add-on lens. It's an Ulanzi wide angle macro lens. So it's a two-in-one and all you do is you kind of stick an adapter on your Sony ZV-1. It also fits the um, RX, the Canon, um, G7 Mark III and it fits the Sony RX100. So it has a stick on adapter that you can just basically stick on your camera body and it screws on to this back piece. It has a camera um, lens cap and it is a wide angle lens. I'll show you just what this simply looks like and you can see the full review right here. But this noise sucks, I'm sorry. That's the worst. But I wanna show you what this does because I think it is a game changer. And again, that video will be linked right here that you can check out because I think it's a game changer. But, I mean, it's focusing on my hand, but I mean, I haven't moved. You see the difference? Big deal. Love this. It's an inexpensive um, problem. It's an inexpensive solution to a problem that I think necessarily isn't for everyone. But I think that when you use the Sony ZV-1 for vlogging, um, and you want that more of a wide angle, this is a must, must, must have. Along with the ZV-1, um, it comes with a battery, um, but I also get extra batteries. These are uh, Numoa batteries. They're just from Amazon. They are third party. 
Um, I think they do a great job for the price. Um, they come with a charger and um, it is well worth to have. I think the Zoni ZV-1 does have a great battery life, but it's always good to have extra. And they're also very lightweight to put in your bag. And I think that it's an amazing thing to have just a little bit of extra because you never know when or if you remember to charge your camera. Sometimes I totally forget and I'm glad that I have these just stowed away. Um, so I always have extra ZV-1 batteries on me. Now, I think the Sony ZV-1 has amazing onboard audio. I have never altered it. I have never changed it. It is perfect to me for a point and shoot camera. I um, was a Sony, I've been a Sony person for almost seven years and I had the A7 um, S series, um, the original, the uh, A6400, everything like that. The onboard audio for those, not so hot. So I do recommend putting a external microphone on here. This is actually the Rode Micro Go. Um, you just plug it into the camera itself. It has a hot shoe mount and you just screw it on and tighten it and it is good to go. It also comes with the uh, dead cat or the fuzzy sock or whatever you want to call this, but it is a shotgun microphone. So it has a little bit of shock absorbency as well. And it is just something super easy and it does um, cut down wind a lot having this on. So I just kept it on when I was filming and it is super easy. It's powered by the camera itself. So you don't have to worry about turning it on. You don't have to worry about making sure that it was um, powered on and you just lost all your audio. Um, some cameras do do that, but this is super easy. I think this is around hundred dollars if I remember correctly. And again, all of the stuff that I will be showing you is linked in the description down below. Um, you can get all of it pretty much on Amazon. Um, if you can't, I will link the website, but most of the stuff I do get on Amazon because I kind of find it cheaper sometimes. And third party stuff is obviously easy to find on Amazon because any anything is on Amazon. But this is a great, uh, anything Rode makes is great. If you have a Sony camera, the newer ones especially, they have a magnetic connector for their microphone. So if you wanted a Sony wireless microphone um, that was kind of like this, it, it basically is, it looks like this situation without the cord. Um, it kind of fits onto your hot shoe mount and it has a magnetic connector on the hot shoe and the cold shoe. Um, well, this is a cold shoe, that's a hot shoe. And the um, microphone is powered that way. So you also don't have to charge that. But if you wanted something like this, if you have a different camera or if you have an older camera, the Rode uh, Video Go is a great option for that. And I've used this for many, many years and has done me very, very well. Another must have for me is a tripod. Now this is an extendable tripod. It has, um, it does it goes pretty tall. I would say this is fully extended um, and it has three um, legs, obviously it's a tripod, it has a, um, a ball head and it also has a Manfrotto. Um, if you have Manfrotto products, it has a Manfrotto um, twist mount right here that you can twist onto the bottom of your camera and it slides right there. And of course it is, um, has a ball head, which is perfect for video and you can get that lovely angle. But also something that I love about this one, it's a uh, Komen. It's very, very, very lightweight. I really enjoy it. It fits lovely in my hand. I have no problem ever uh, getting too heavy. Um, this is a really, really great thing. But if I wanted it to be taller, I could also have this. It came with the um, the tripod and it also comes in this beautiful case right here, which is just easy. Um, and you can also hook it to a bag if you needed to, which I actually love um, so it doesn't get lost because everything for camera seems to be black, which I probably would have picked black anyway because I wear mostly neutral colors. Um, but this is an extender for the tripod. So not only can you have it be this tall, this is the height that it gets. I think it's pretty great. Um, this ball head comes off and I'm not gonna do that now because it's gonna be a loud noise. It also can be this much taller, which is out of frame now, but I would say this is about three feet. Um, it, there we go. So it would start here and you would put the, this part actually on the top. So it would extend it a good amount. I think this is a pretty, pretty solid tripod and it's still, this is extremely lightweight. Also, if you wanted to use this as a single um, handle, you can definitely do that, a monopod situation, go for it. Um, another thing that I really enjoy about this um, tripod is um, you can make it flat. So it has these little, 
things here and the legs can literally go all the way out. So if you needed to set it down or angle it in a very weird way um, to make it, you know, to get it to that exact angle that you needed it to get, it's possible. You can do it. This is a very versatile, lightweight again, but it is aluminum, um, I believe. Carbon fiber. Um, this is the box it came in. Super simple, super thing. It weighs, um, the max height is 13.3 inches. That's what this is right here. And um, it's 8.7 inches when it's unfolded. It weighs 0.9 pounds and it can hold up to 6.6 .6 pounds. So that's a pretty hefty um, load that it can hold um, for vlogging cameras. I wouldn't put, you know, big, big bulky things on it. Um, you can also put your phone on this. It has um, attachments on the sides here. You can screw in um, a microphone mount. You can screw in a phone mount. You can screw in a bunch of other things that um, you can. And it comes with some accessories that you can do that with. But uh, I think this is a super versatile little tool. And again, super easy to carry. I have pretty small hands. Um, so I've had a hard time with the, with the gorilla pods. Um, I have a hard time with those and, um, because they're just so chunky in my hands that I wasn't really a fan. I love Joby products, but the, um, the gorilla pod was giving me a hard time. I love the angle, but this has really saved me when it comes to being lightweight. Um, if you wanted to just carry it single, you can, it's very sturdy again, carbon fiber, Super lightweight, super fantastic, I love it. Another thing that I really think is a great tool is a GoPro. This is the GoPro Hero 8. I upgraded from the 6 and I think that what they have done, the 9 is out at this point, but I think what they have done, the stabilization of a GoPro and the ease and this like, just everything about it is so smart. Um, batteries last a really long time. Just keep in mind, if you have a cold climate that you're in, any battery that you have, whether it be your phone, your camera, a GoPro, the batteries go quicker because they need to stay a particular temperature. They're regulating that so they do go quicker. Um, I've learned that the hard way <laughs> over the past couple years. So just keep extra batteries on hand. Um, I buy, I came with a GoPro battery, but GoPole um, is actually a great source for GoPro accessories. I really enjoy, I have a bunch of GoPole stuff and um, it's perfect. It, they literally, this is a GoPro battery and this is a GoPro battery. They look identical, obviously, um, but they, I mean, GoPro has a great option for extra batteries. Um, I'm gonna show you some mounts that I like to use, but a GoPro is key, especially if you're doing a lot of outdoorsy stuff. Um, I use this when I'm at Disney, when I do a lot of uh, roller coasters. The low light on this isn't as great as I thought it would be. Um, I know that they, it's a small sensor, I get it. Um, but if I was in low light, I would probably use my phone because it has great stabilization as well. But I, um, during the day, like say if I'm on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, um, which is a really, really bumpy roller coaster, I would choose this in the daytime, any time of the day. Um, it's great, it's easy, it's lightweight. You can throw it in a bag, it's indestructible. Um, so you don't have to really worry about it, being cautious about it. This is great. And some of my favorite mounts that I use are my wrist mount. Um, this rotates any way that you want it to. Um, and you just slide it on your wrist, it's Velcro. And it is um, very versatile. You can put it any way you want. Um, if you were doing something and you wanted it to be upside down, you were holding on to something like this, you could do it that way. Um, you could probably even put this on your ankle if you were like, if you really needed to. It's really sturdy. You can point it any way you want to. It's this part up top spins. Um, this is from GoPro. So they do have this at other places. You can get a third party, but um, I got this from GoPro and it's pretty inexpensive for what it is. And it has a Velcro um, strap that's adjustable, super easy. I love using this one on roller coaster so I can still kind of hold on if it's super bumpy. Um, I love this one. And these screw mounts are from GoPro. I like that they have the little tag, if you will, tail, because they're easier to grip. So I do like those, but um, this, and it has a pad right here for your wrist, so you won't get um, hurt. 
or it won't get too like scratchy or anything like that. Another mount that I have is this go pull tripod. Um, obviously it's bent right now because I was just showing someone how to use it, but it is almost like a gorilla pod. It can be wrapped around anything. Um, it stands probably, I would say 10 inches tall. You screw this on, it has, you can put the um, GoPro um, kind of piece right here. You can put a phone thing on here. It's very versatile and it also has a ball head. You can unscrew this and you can kind of move this however you want to get the angle you need. And then this, of course, wraps around if you needed it to wrap around, or it can be kind of leaned if you were like in the mountains, like hiking and you needed it to be a weird angle. It comes at a weird angle. It's very sturdy, even though it doesn't seem like it would be. And um, I really, really like this. It's very lightweight. It's a silicone here, so it's very grippy and uh, the, the bottoms, however, they're, you know, non-slip. I really, really like this. Um, this is a GoPro accessory. I really like the GoPros for GoPro. And I like this a lot. This is a great thing for vacation, um, for if you were doing a lot of hiking, a lot of outdoor stuff and you need a tripod, this is pretty good. Um, I would say, I would recommend this one if you were doing a lot of travel as far as non-cold. Um, and this, if you were doing a lot of cold stuff, because this fat, this material won't get cold. Um, it will over time, but it won't be cold to the touch. Um, it would just be a little chilly. This is carbon fiber and it's metal. So if this is cold, it's going to be cold. Um, you're going to touch it like it's ice. So I would recommend this if you're doing a lot of outdoorsy things, a lot of cold things, climate things, this, if you're doing everything else. Um, another one of my favorite mounts is kind of odd. Um, it's a bite mount. So it's almost like a mouth guard and it has pieces like that and you just put it in your mouth like this and your GoPro gets hooked here. You just put the um, screw here and your GoPro just comes here. So you can either do it this way um, up like so or you can do it down. Um, and this one, this is from GoPro. The one at GoPro, I don't like the um, it's flat and just has silicone over top. This one actually has, it's more sturdy and it's almost like a mouth guard, like you're going like for sports. Um, so it's more sturdy to me and you can also breathe through it. It has like a snorkel kind of situation. Like you have breath holes there. So you can breathe through it easier if you are doing it a long period of time. The reason that I have this is um, because if you have a GoPro and you want like a POV of something, it um, putting it on your head is too high putting it on your chest is too low. So putting it in your mouth is pretty eye level for most people. So if you're riding a bike, if you're snowboarding, if you are even snorkeling or diving or anything like that, having it here um, really immerses people into the what's around them instead of it being kind of super wide angle up here or super weird low down here. So I really think that the, um, the bite mouth area is a really good angle for POVs for especially action stuff um or if you were just trying to tell a story in a weird way um doing this you know cooking anything like that this is a great option go pull really great thing it's really sturdy in my opinion um another one that I have that I don't really use very often is the magnetic clip it's a clip um but also this part is magnetic and it sticks to something flat. And um, this can also stick to a car. Um, it can stick to a refrigerator. It can stick to, if you're in a kitchen, um, it can stick to like, if you're a commercial kitchen, everything's metal, um, basically or stainless steel. And you can, you know, add that. And, um, you know, it's just a great option. And this just, um, it's one of those basic GoPro click mounts where you undo the piece and you, s I'm very bad at this all the time. Anyways, I'm not gonna do it cause I can't. Um, you slide this out if you need to, you can like these, this is what goes in like chest mounts. It goes in a lot, a lot of different mounts. So you can kind of keep that on your GoPro if you use a lot of that. But I really like this one when it comes to versatility. It's a clip so you can like, it's a very strong clip too. Like this is kind of painful. Um, but you can hook this to a lot of things and uh, it has grippy teeth in it. 
I like that. And also again, it has a magnet uh, logo here. This whole back is magnet, so you can stick it to a lot of different things and get that really unique angle that you wanted to. But my favorite mount is the suction cup mount. This is a Joby um, Gorilla Pod suction cup mount. Um, it has the suction cup and you just twist it for it to stick. See, so you stick it to something, you twist this and it, I can lift this table with this. It's very, very strong. People put this on the outside of planes and I find that very fascinating. You can put it on the outside of a car to get a weird angle. Um, just, you know, stick it to something. You can, I mainly use this to stick to airplane windows um, or if I'm doing a time lapse out my back door or if I'm doing something, it's, I'm usually using it on glass, but I think this is a great little tool. It's easy, it's small, it's very lightweight, it's simple to use. And I really like this because you can pretty much get it any way you want. So if you're sticking it up here, if you needed this to be any way, this arm is so flexible. Like, I mean, it can basically fold into itself. And I just think that this is a great tool to have um, in your arsenal for getting that great angle on planes, on trains, and on automobiles. <laughs> um, now we're getting into kind of the techie kind of stuff and the stuff that isn't necessary, but I'm just gonna tell you what I use so maybe it is helpful. I am a Mac user, so I use Final Cut Pro to edit my videos. And unfortunately and fortunately, Apple has committed to USB-C's. Now that doesn't help me when I'm using a USB uh, for my external hard drive. I put my entire Final Cut libraries on external hard drives. Nothing is stored on my computer except basic stuff like my intro, my end cards, graphics, things like that, that, it won't, that don't change really, um, that I don't really need access to, um, that aren't as important because I can always rebuild them. Um, but these are my, all my footage. Um, this one's kind of chunky. It's a WD. I like WD brand. Um, Samsung has actually come out with one that's very tiny that I've heard nothing but rave things about. So I might switch to that one. It's very expensive, but it does a lot more and it's very smaller. This one's very chunky. But what I do is I have a case on my computer. Um, so I do have stick on Velcro and this is the scratchy side of the Velcro and the, my case has the other. So I stick it on and then it has the cord and I run it to a dongle because all MacBooks now have USB-C ports. No um, SD readers, no USBs, nothing like that. They're all USB-C. Um, so the main dongle that I use is an Anchor brand. I love Anchor products. They're fantastic. So it plugs into the side of my computer with these two USB-C adapters right here. And then it sits flat like this. Here is a HDMI. If you need an HDMI, it's got, of course, a USB-C, two USBs, another USB-C, and a micro SD reader and a normal SD reader. This is the mother load of uh, dongles. It is huge. Um, it, so this is my space gray because my computer is space gray, so it just blends in perfectly, but it is chunky. So if I'm just wanting to do something quickly, print something easily without having to plug that whole thing in. I do have a small little dongle, which is, wow. Okay. If I want something USB, C to USB, um, just get something tiny like this. I think that having just one, these normally come in two packs. Um, I like having these just in case, um, if someone needs to use my computer for something instead of me getting this out or if I forgot this or if I just need to travel and I need to kind of use this for more of a presentation situation. Um, it's easier to do it that way instead of taking this huge thing, but I only take this. Having one of these is always just nice, just in case. Um, and also you can <laughs> plug, if you needed another USB um, on this one, cause it already has two, you can just plug this dongle into the USB-C ports. Um, and have a third USB as an option. You can do that if you want. Again, that's so excessive, but it, this is super helpful to have um, when you are a Mac user. I'm sure everyone knows that as Mac users, everything should be USB-C uh, at this point, but they have not converted everything. It's quicker, it's faster, it's easier, but that is, as far as computers go, 
But something that I recommend that if you are vlogging with your phone, especially if you're Instagramming with your phone, if you're using Instagram or your phone as your main source, a battery bank, a power bank is so important and necessary. Again, this is an Anchor brand. I love Anchor. It has done me so well over the years. I've used Anchor for probably 10 years with a bunch of different products. Um, it is an amazing brand, simple. So all you do here is you can charge this with a USB-C, but you cannot output it with USB-C, so it has the USB. So you just plug your phone in with a cord, you turn it on, and this has three batteries left. It charges your phone. You can charge batteries with this if you're on the go. Um, you can charge your GoPro with this if you needed to do that. I think just having one that's simple and thin, uh, I believe this one is 21,000 um, watts or whatever the measurement is for that. Um, it's really slim, it's like easy, it's lightweight. I really like having this, let's see if, oh, this is 10,000. Power Core Slim 10,000 is what this one is. Um, it charges my phone a couple times and if I charge other things, it'll keep going. But this is essential if you are on the go and don't have access to a lot of plugs maybe. Um, I used this when I was in Spain because there weren't a lot of outlets in our Airbnb that we had because European old homes don't have that. So I did use this a lot um, just as an extra kind of thing to have um, something plugged into to charge it at night when we got back to the room. So I love a power bank for a lot of things. And we're almost done. Thank you for sticking with me. We're getting to a fun part, I guess, if you will, which are bags. Um, I, especially if you're traveling and carrying all this stuff, it's a lot of stuff. Um, I love Peak Design. Peak Design is a brand that has waterproof um, bags and they have phone cases. They have a ton of different accessories that I think are fantastic. This is a, an accessory bag. Um, you can kind of hook it. There's a, a loop here. There's a loop here on this end. You can hook um, like a strap if you wanted to carry this, like a maybe a side satchel. You can hook like a, they have um, a lanyard style camera, bat, like camera um, strap, which you can also use for this. But this is expandable. And again, it's waterproof, it's sealed in the zipper. But it has, it expands, it's huge inside. You can put, uh, it's a tech pouch. You can put your batteries in this pocket. It's just a lot of different little pockets to keep everything organized. And I, it's so huge. Like I can fit most of everything that I just said into this bag. And this just gets thrown into my carry-on bag and gets, you know, it's super easy. It also has this one zipper in the back, which if you wanted to, this would be a great airport bag for a side satchel. If you didn't want to carry a bunch of stuff, um, it's not RFID from what I remember, but you can put your passport in this little side. You can throw your phone in it. Super easy, super quick. Um, I think that this is such a great, there's a zipper pouch in here. There's just a lot of little pouches that can fit so many things to keep you organized because everything for cameras, especially for GoPros, um, is so small. It is something that um, I think has really helped me when traveling to keep everything in one place, chargers, batteries, everything like that. I love this, it's an accessory pouch, but when I go out, I do carry this. This is my Peak Design side satchel. Um, messenger bag, everyday tote, everyday sling, I think is what the actual name of it is. And you can make this as long as you want. You can tighten it. This is padded, so nice. Um, and I love this. So it has a like handle here if you just want to carry it like so, or you are lifting it. And it also is waterproof like I mentioned. And it's expandable so good, like so much. It has this zipper pocket up here where you can also have little pockets. And this is my favorite. So this is specifically a camera bag and it has the pockets where you can actually 
like bend them to make it for a tall lens or a short lens or double camera body, if you can tell. And then it has a middle pouch right here. But basically everything that I need can fit in here. Um, my cameras, my tripod actually. The fun thing about this bag is it has these little hooks down here. These hooks have little straps that are in a box downstairs, but um, they kind of strap in and your tripod can get hooked to the bottom of your bag. Um, if you had a longer tripod than this, um, it would still get hooked because they're on both sides. And it just hooks on like that, super simple. You can sling it over and wear it um, as like a hip pack. You can wear it as a bum pack and you can wear it as a side satchel, which I normally do. Um, I normally just throw it on here and I just kind of have this maneuver and I wear it on my back like so. I really like it. Again, it is waterproof, so if you are traveling, um, if you spill something, if you are spill prone, which some people are, um, but if it starts to rain, if it starts to um, storm, you are protected, you're safe with everything in here. I love this bag so much. It is perfect. I love the color. It has a zipper out here as well. Peak Design does a really good job with bags. Um, they also have a backpack that I used to have. I don't, I think I don't have it anymore, but um, and it's a great travel bag, but I love this. They have this in different sizes. So I think this is the five millimeter. They have smaller ones and bigger ones. And they also have the day packs, which are actual backpacks. Um, again, Peak Design, one of my favorite brands for bags, for camera accessories, things like that. So I have this and then guys, I wanted to throw this one in there because I have been in love with flying drones for four or five years at this point. I don't ever really get to do it um, because what you have seen on this channel is mostly Disney. You cannot fly drones at Disney. There are a lot of stipulations on flying drones with being a pilot, with how high you can fly within what kind of stipulations. But this is the drone that I have now. This is one of them. I sold my other one. So I had two at one point, um, but this is the DJI Mavic Pro. It is a workhorse. Um, so this looks very small, it is. Um, they do make smaller ones, they make bigger ones, obviously, the Phantoms, but you just fold these out and it has a remote, it shoots in 4K, and it just flies. Um, this is the battery. Well. So this is again, super lightweight, easy to travel with. Um, you can't really use, you can't take drones on cruise ships, um, you can't fly within five miles of an airport. You can't fly within a particular height um, in particular areas. Some places are just no fly zones and it's just a lot to think about. So if you're not ready for that um, and taking the courses and the classes and the licensing and things like that, um, don't worry about it. I think this is so fun um, and worth all of that stuff, but you have to abide by a lot of rules and just to let you know those are out there. But I really do think that this provides a great source of fun and a good view of what you're doing, especially when you're doing travel stuff. So I hope to use this more this year because it is something that I love, love, love doing. And it's so small. The one I'm hopefully getting soon is the Mavic Mini. But this, to show you how small this is, this fits perfectly. Just right here well like this done i can fit mostly everything that i have showed you in this bag um and i love that this bag is again genius and i uh i'm really excited that i got to show you this stuff i hope this was helpful i hope this was enjoyable to watch i hope this inspired you to maybe upgrade some of your stuff or just to start um just press record and i really love tech stuff i love camera stuff so if you guys want to see more of this let me know down in the comments if you have specific questions about any of this gear please let me know most of it will be linked in the description if you wanted to check it out um their amazon affiliate links just so you know and i really i do use all of this stuff so none of it was given to me, none of it is sponsored. I literally, this is mine um, and I use it quite often. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, 
and I hope you get inspired or you get some confidence into starting a channel if you were kind of thinking about it, but you just didn't know where to start. I hope this was helpful on that. I hope that you guys start creating in 2021 and just loving what you're doing and what you're passionate about. Thank you for joining me in this kind of weird new type of video that I was doing. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So make sure you have that bell notification on so you don't miss one. And until next time guys, be beautiful humans. Bye.